What's up guys and welcome back to the Concrete Edge right here on Deco Creek TV. <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, so my name is Jeff and on today's show we're going to be talking about saw cutting concrete. Uh, so why do we need to do this? When is the best time to do it? How deep do you make the cuts? And how do you lay out the pattern? So stay tuned and you're going to learn. All right. So even if you know nothing about concrete, you're brand new at this, uh, you probably have noticed uh, that concrete slabs always have saw cuts or tool joints in them. And although this can add a design element to the slab, the real reason that people do this is to control cracking. Now, I said to control cracking, not eliminate cracking. I mean, concrete is gonna crack. That is just one of the things that it is going to do. The point of the saw cut or the tool joint is to create a weak spot so that the concrete will crack there instead of finding its own way across the slab. Now, this still doesn't guarantee that you'll never have any cracks between the saw cuts, but getting them in at the right time, uh, cutting the right depth, and making sure that the blocks are the right size is gonna give you the best chance possible. Now, as far as the timing, I mean, this is gonna depend on the weather and what kind of equipment you have and uh, how deep to cut and how uh, far apart the saw cuts need to be is gonna depend on the thickness of the slab. So starting off with timing, and again, this one is gonna depend a little bit on weather conditions, so you're gonna have to adjust for extreme uh, one way or the other. I mean, in really hot weather, I mean, you're probably gonna have to cut the same day no matter what kind of saw you have. And when it's cool out, I mean, you might need to wait a day, two, maybe even three before that's even ready to cut. Now the exact timing um, is going to be a little bit dependent on equipment and so we're going to break this down into two different sections and the first one is going to be conventional saw cutting and what I mean by this is just a normal concrete saw with a green blade and by green blade I don't mean the color green I mean a blade that is designed to cut green concrete. Uh, there are blades that are designed to cut concrete that is really really cured out. Um, but no matter what this is typically done within the first 24 hours after the concrete has been finished and for the most part this is just going to be a next morning thing. I mean, if you cut it too soon, uh, that blade is just gonna chip the concrete a little bit and the cuts aren't gonna look very clean. And if you wait too long, obviously you're just gonna run the risk of the concrete cracking before you even get the cuts in in the first place. Now, the other option would be early entry saws or soft cut saws, and this typically is done within a few hours after finishing. And so basically, uh, it's gonna be the same day. I mean, early entry saws are designed to cut that concrete without chipping it. And now some of this timing is gonna depend a little bit on how you finish the concrete. I mean, for a hard trout, machine finished floor, I mean, these cuts can be put in, I mean, pretty much immediately after finishing, but for broom, swirled, or stamped concrete, I mean, you're gonna have to wait uh, till that surface is hard enough to handle the wheels of the saw and the weight of the person running it. So now onto depth, and the general rule here is that the saw cuts need to be made to a depth of 25 to 33% of the thickness of the slab. So, for example, a four inch thick slab of concrete, this means that the cuts need to be an inch to an inch and three eighths in depth. And for that six inch slab, well, it's gonna be more like an inch and a half to two inches deep. Now, this is really important because if you don't make those cuts deep enough, I mean, they're just not gonna do any good. I mean, the crack won't end up finding uh, that cut and they're just gonna go wherever they want. Now, some cut saws have a depth gauge on them and that makes this part really easy, but if the saw that you're using doesn't, don't just guess on this. Uh, just uh, start your cut a little bit and then stick something down in there so you can get a good measurement on it and make sure it's deep enough. Or what I like to do is just pre-measure and mark your saw blade so now you got a nice line to follow. So now on to the size of the blocks or how far the cuts need to be apart. And the general rule here is that the cut should be spaced 24 to 36 times the thickness of the slab. Now, I know that just kind of sounded crazy what I said right there, but I mean, honestly, that is the proper formula. So if we're just gonna break this down to an example, and again, we're gonna go back to a four inch thick slab. Uh, if we do the math on that, that's gonna say that those cuts need to be spread out uh, 96 to 144 inches apart or here in the real world, the way I like to look at it is eight to 12 feet. Now, I don't know too many contractors that are gonna put, uh, put cuts 12 foot apart on a four inch slab. I mean, most of them would stick to around eight to 10 footers. And this is kind of like that depth thing. I mean, don't push the limits here. Uh, don't try to eliminate a cut just to save time, just err on the side of caution. Now, when it comes to the layout of this, I mean, of course, you're gonna have to lay each slab out differently and very few are gonna end up being exactly the same. 
and <laughs> having exactly 10 feet uh, between cuts is going to be pretty rare. You're just going to have to take the total length and the width of the slab and break them down into as equal parts as possible. And I mean, if you end up with eight and a half footers one way and nine footers the other way, uh, don't worry, that is completely fine. Just get them as close as you can. So before we get to the recap, I just have a few other things to consider. And the first one is posts and corners and openings and just always make sure to hit these with a saw cut. I mean, concrete is gonna tend to crack in those areas just because it's the, anytime there's a post or something in the middle of the concrete or a corner, it's gonna naturally create its own weak spot. And if we don't address that, it's gonna end up cracking off that corner or post. Now, another thing is anytime you go from really wide to really narrow, and you know, in this case, like if you're pouring a wide driveway and it's gonna neck down into a narrow sidewalk or a patio to a sidewalk or any situation like that where it goes from wide to narrow, right at that spot, at that intersection, is gonna be, again, another weak spot. So you just always wanna make sure you put a cut right there uh, or you're gonna end up with a crack. Now, along the same lines would be just long stretches of concrete that aren't very wide. In other words, uh, like a four foot sidewalk that's 100 feet long, you know, right, and that, that is asking a lot for that to go through an entire night without that thing cracking or like a 14 foot uh, wide driveway that's 200 feet long. You know, a lot of guys will handle this different ways. If you don't have a soft cut saw, uh, it might not be a bad idea to put a piece of zip strip right in the middle of that just to make sure that it makes it through the night. Now, the last thing is tool joints. And I know this is a big topic of debate. Do you saw cut or do you uh, put a tool joint in? Now, hand groove tool joints, they do look better in certain situations, and I mean, some of that is gonna come down to preference, um, but you know, the other thing is that you do put them in while you're finishing, and so you don't have to worry about the concrete cracking before you get your cuts in, because they're there way before uh, this could ever happen anyway. But there are two things about tool joints, and the first one is that it just takes a lot more time and a lot more labor, and so don't bite off more than you can chew. If you're new to this, uh, just go ahead and pour the concrete, and it's all good the next day. Uh, just save yourself some work. The other thing is to make sure that you use the right tool uh, for the thickness of the slab, and this is just like saw cutting. That groove has got to be at least a quarter of the depth of the slab in order for this to work. Now, honestly, the safe thing to do with tool joints is to just go ahead and put a saw cut right down the middle of them the next day. All right, so quick little recap uh, before we finish up here. Concrete needs to have saw cuts or tool joints to control cracking. Now, this doesn't mean that the concrete won't crack. It means that the concrete is gonna crack in the saw cuts. Now, for the most part, this needs to be done within the first 24 hours, uh, but weather conditions and equipment will determine the exact timing. Always make sure that the depth of your cuts are at least 25% of the thickness of the slab and use that formula we talked about earlier to calculate the distance between cuts. And again, just always when it comes to depth and, and length between cuts, just always err on the side of caution. Uh, whatever that spec says, I would just, I would never try to push the limits. And lastly, just remember that this is concrete and it is going to crack. And I mean, following all these guidelines is gonna really, really help uh, reduce the amount of visible cracks, uh, but there are never any guarantees. And the most important thing is that that slab is functional. I mean, that's the whole point of concrete to start off with. Well guys, that's pretty much it for today's show. Thank you guys so much for taking the time uh, to tune in and watch these videos, man. And we really, really do appreciate all the support that you guys show to the channel every week. And don't forget about the Decorative Concrete Expo. It happens every single February. All you got to do is click the link right down in the description. All the information is there. So from all of us here at DecoCrete TV, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.